Piltover, often called the city of progress, is a vibrant and flourishing metropolis, steadily gaining power and influence. Known as Valorant's cultural heart, it is a place where art, craftsmanship, trade and innovation seamlessly blend. Its strength is not drawn from military prowess, but from the forces of commerce and visionary thinking. Perched high on the cliffs above zone and overlooking the vast ocean, its colossal sea gates welcome fleets from across the globe laden with goods from distant lands. This world has sparked an extraordinary boom, fueling the city's rapid growth. Piltover continues to reshape itself into a land of opportunity where fortunes are made and dreams become reality. Prominent merchant families fund ambitious projects, grand artistic ventures, arcane hextech research and towering architectural feats that showcase their influence. With more and more inventors exploring the mysteries of Hextech, Piltover has become a beacon for the finest craftsmen from around the world. Welcome lore lovers to another deep dive into the intricate world of League of Legends. I am Lindrag and today we'll unravel the mysteries and marvels of one of Valorant's most renowned city-states. From its grandiose hexed gates to the bustling wharfs and the influential mercantile clans, to the rich tapestry of its political and social fabric, Piltover is a city brimming with stories waiting to be discovered. So buckle up as we embark on this journey through the city of progress. Piltover's creation was based on a tragic event, a complete disaster caused by humans from Zone who devised a plan to carve to the isthmus that connected Valorant to the southern continent, aiming to create a safe passage between eastern and western Valorant by detonating thousands of chemtech bombs. However, the plan backfired disastrously. A chain of earthquakes was unleashed, obliterating the isthmus and submerging large sections of zone along with thousands of its inhabitants. Poisonous gas spilled into the remaining parts of the city, threatening those who survived. In their hour of need, Janna, empowered by the prayers of the people, arrived and swept away the deadly fumes, saving countless lives. This act elevated her from a deity of sailors to a revered guardian of Zone. Since that moment, Janna has remained in Zone, protecting its people. Zone was eventually rebuilt, to control the river passage that now flowed through the ravaged land. The sun gates were constructed ensuring that all ships passing through the waters had to pay a toll. This brought immense wealth to Zone, setting the stage for Piltover's rise. The ruling families, enriched by the Sun Gates trade, laid the foundations for the powerful merchant clans that would dominate Piltover. The construction of the Sun Gates altered the landscape of Eastern Valorant and the surrounding seas. Noxus, now able to easily channel resources across its empire without relying on land routes, grew stronger. Meanwhile, Bilgewater's pirates found the trade routes teeming with targets, feeding the city's criminal underworld. Today, Piltover's greatest thing is the invasion of Hextech technology. The Ferris family built their fortune on a rare crystal found in the distant deserts known as the First Hex Crystals. These first crystals held a power typically reserved for those born with innate magical abilities. Elysia, Camille's great-great-aunt, nearly lost her life and her arm on one of the early expeditions to acquire these crystals. Her sacrifice became legendary within the Ferris family and the motto for family will I give was born from this legacy. However, the creatures from which these crystals were harvested, the Brackern, were not an endless resource. The Ferris family had to turn to other means to enhance their stockpile of crystals. Through covert investments in chemtech and runic alchemy, they developed synthetic hex crystals, less powerful than the originals but far easier to produce. Yet the production of these synthetic crystals is rumored to be one of the causes of the zone grey. Piltover, the city of progress, stood as a beacon of innovation but Jinx found a way to halt its advancements through chaos. She unleashed anarchy upon the city, buildings collapsed, lives were lost, animals ran wild and gunfire filled the air. It was the perfect stage for Jinx's dream of disorder. Piltover's finest, Caitlyn and Vi, tried to catch her but she remained elusive. As her rampage grew, Caitlyn initiated a city-wide manhunt. Jinx responded by marking the treasury with a challenge to Vi, promising to strike at a specific time and place. True to her world, she appeared causing destruction as usual. 
Vi pursued her relentlessly, smashing through obstacles in her path. Eventually cornered, Jinx unleashed a barrage of rockets, leveling the building. When the officers awoke, they found the gold intact and a message spelled out in the lights across the sky. You will never catch me. During the annual progress day, three Naxian spies, Gisbert, Tamara and Colette, had infiltrated Piltover, hoping to place an agent within Clan Medarda. They used the festival to showcase their technical prowess before the clan's masters and apprentices. Tamara demonstrated her invention, the Hex Armillary Amplifier, which harnessed the power of a crystal to exponentially increase its output. However, the device was intentionally flawed, and it nearly destroyed the entire hall. This sabotage was part of their plot to disrupt Piltover's progress. After the incident, Caitlin apprehended Tamara, having uncovered her true identity and mission. She was banished from Piltover and sent back to Naxus. While both Tamara and Gisbert failed in their mission, Colette managed to secure a position of an apprentice. Later, she would pass a Medarda training map to Naxian intelligence, furthering their schemes. Jay Stalis, an apprentice from Clan Kiraman, began experimenting in secret to combine magic with science using hex crystals. His inspiration came from a mage who had once saved his life. But when his workshop was broken into, a hex crystal shattered, causing an explosion that led to an investigation by the wardens. His work was confiscated and Jace was arrested for conducting unauthorized research. Despite Heimerdinger's advice to abandon his pursuit of magic, Jace revealed the nature of his research during his trial. He argued for the potential good that could come from mastering magic for Piltover's benefit, though the council rejected his idea and nearly banished him, his mother Ximena intervened, securing his release but resulting in his expulsion from the academy. Disheartened, Jace sought someone who shared his vision. He found an unlikely ally in Victor, who was intrigued by Jace's theories and took one of his journals. Together, they stabilized the Hex crystals, just as their research was set to be destroyed. Sneaking into Heimerdinger's lab, they succeeded in proving the crystal's potential. Despite Heimerdinger's displeasure, Councillor Medarda saw the opportunity, and the duo's breakthrough was presented to the Council. Over the years, Hextech transformed trade and transport in Piltover, giving rise to the revolutionary Hex gates, which could change the city forever. Now the flourishing city has grown big and it has a lot of important places. The first one is the Blue Wind Court. In the northern reaches of Piltover lies the Blue Wind Court, where the city's most influential families reside. The mansions of powerful clans like Arvino, Feros, Medarda and the others stand here, guarded by high walls and advanced security. Among these estates is Jace's laboratory, housed within the Geopara mansion, where he crafted his iconic Mercury Hammer. Sidereal Avenue is one of Piltover's most stunning streets, funded by the wealthy merchant clans who showcase their prosperity through grand architecture. It is home to the Piltover treasury and the famed ecliptic vaults, which were once breached by Jinx in her reign of chaos. The sun gates are Piltover's gateway to the world, a vital trade hub linking Valoran and Shurima. Their construction reshaped both Piltover and Zone, creating immense wealth for Piltover's ruling class, but also sinking parts of Zone in the process. Today, the Sun Gates stand as a symbol of both progress and loss. The Rising Howl is a colossal elevator that connects Zone and Piltover, allowing citizens to move between the levels of the city. This towering structure, adorned with intricate ironwork and steam-powered mechanisms, is vital for both public and private transport. In Arcane, Piltover's history and layout have distinct differences from its main canon counterpart. The Hex Gates dominate the city's landscape, standing tall as one of the Piltover's most innovative achievements. These massive retractable towers, devised by Jace and Victor, are powered by Hextech and allow for seamless transportation of people, vehicles and goods across vast distances in Runeterra. The Hex Gates revolutionized trade by offering near instantaneous travel and their function relies on intricate mechanisms involving rotatable globes and hexit batteries, which must be replaced after each jump. Their towering height restricts their use to airships, emphasizing Piltover's dominance in cutting-edge technology. The Bridge of Progress, spanning the northern and southern sections of the city, is more than just an architectural marvel. It holds deep significance as a site of frequent uprisings from the Undercity. The bridge became infamous for the bombing orchestrated by Jinx, 
a chaotic attack that claimed the lives of many wardens during a citywide lockdown, marking a dark chapter in Piltover's history. In the southern reaches of the city, the fissures represent the entirety of zones under city. Unlike the main canon, where zones under city sprawls beneath the eastern side of the canal, in Arcane, these fissures are confined to the southern parts, emphasizing the stark division between Piltover and Zone. The University of Piltover, centrally located near the Hex Gates, plays a crucial role not only in education but as a seat of power where the clan council gathers to discuss matters of state and progress. The institution stands as a symbol of knowledge and the city's relentless pursuit of innovation. Off the coast of the eastern part of Piltover, the grim fortress of Stillwater Hold rises as a maximum security prison. It is an imposing structure designed to house Piltover and Zone's most dangerous criminals across its towering 40 floors. The prison operates under strict conditions, with inmates subjected to solitary confinement and tasked with manual labor. Despite its severe atmosphere, prisoners somehow manage to acquire tattoos and piercings, hinting at hidden channels of influence even within its walls. Piltover thrive on its position as the commanding power over the vital sea routes between east and west, with trade serving as the city's lifeblood. The wealth generated from this dominance has not only filled Piltover's coffers with gold, but also contributed to the rapid expansion of the Noxian Empire, whose armies and resources now traverse the continent of Valoran with unparalleled ease. However, this trade dominance has also given rise to piracy particularly benefiting Bilgewater as it has become a sanctuary for pirates and rivers. These lawless figures take advantage of Piltover's bustling trade by preying on the many ships that sail to and from the city. Piltover's climate is generally mild and pleasant, but abrupt changes in temperature often bring about dense sea fogs, shrouding the docks and warehouses. The quay sites, the heart of Piltover's mercantile activity, are always teeming with activity. Ships from every corner of the world pass through the sun gates, making the city a hub of global trade. The docks are filled with the sounds of countless accents and languages, reflecting the diverse origins of its workforce. Anyone with enough strength and a willingness to work can easily find employment in this vibrant port city. Hey lore lovers, if you are enjoying our exploration of Piltover and want to keep up with all things lore, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Lion Drug. Your support helps us bring more fascinating content right to your screen. Now, let's dive back into the heart of Piltover. This cosmopolitan nature defines Piltover and its people. Citizens are fiercely self-reliant, priding themselves on ambition and progress. They disdain interference from outsiders, valuing an open, unregulated market as the cornerstone of their prosperity. Despite the perceived divide between Piltover and Zone, both cities share deep biological, economic and cultural ties that bind them more closely than their citizens often care to admit. Their intertwined fates reflect in everything from trade to innovation, making them two halves of a shared industrial powerhouse. Even though this city is highly based on technology, myths and legends appear where humans are present, so even Piltover has some, such as the Church of the Glorious Evolved which is a prominent religious and ideological movement within both Piltover and Zone, advocating for the belief that flesh is inherently weak compared to the strength and durability of steel and machinery. Followers of the church view techmaturgy diffusion of magic and technology as the path to transcend the limitations of the human body, striving for a world where inefficiency and frailty are purged through technological augmentation. Victor, often seen by members of the church as a messianic figure, represents the ideals of the glorious evolution. However, Victor himself disdains the quasi-religious reverence surrounding him, believing the church's emotional and irrational beliefs to be flawed. He views their worship as an aberration, yet another example of the emotional weaknesses he seeks to eliminate through empirical scientific progress. Despite not being officially aligned with the church, Camille commands significant respect among its followers. Her extensive mechanical augmentations and her philosophy of calculated efficiency embody the church's ideals, giving her influence within its ranks. Her reputation is such that she is often mistaken for the church's revered figure, the Grey Lady, although Camille is not to be confused with this symbolic saint. 
The Grey Lady is a central figure of the Church's faith, honored as the patron saint of those seeking salvation through technology. Her depiction in the first assemblage of the Glorious Evolved features a stained glass window where her cloak is crafted from ash violet glass, rusted gears and corroded pistons, symbolizing the transformation of the old into the new. Her blessing is invoked when inventors face challenges, though it often comes at the cost of personal sacrifice, a tradition deeply rooted in Zone's history, particularly after the devastation of the incident. The Glorious Evolved also honors the Zonite custom of sacrificing something personal on Progress Day. This act of letting go is believed to fuel the next step of innovation echoing the resilience of Zon's people as they rebuild their lives in the shadow of Piltover's rise to wealth atop their ruined home. Tam Kench, also known as Two Coats, is another figure whose legend has spread to Piltover and Zon, especially after the opening of the Sand Gates made trade routes to Bilgewater more accessible. This mythical creature is depicted as a monstrous glutinous fish dressed in two fine jackets symbolizing insatiable greed. Piltover's artificers and even children know tales of the River King, whose presence is said to awaken a ravenous desire for wealth and power in those who encounter him. In Piltover, the constant drive for progress and innovation isn't just about technological advancements, it is also about improving the city-state's social and environmental well-being. The leading mercantile clans, powerful and wealthy, strive to integrate the latest scientific innovations into their everyday life and infrastructure. One recent example of this is Clan Medarda's influence in pushing other clans to invest heavily in harnessing Hextech, a revolutionary fusion of magic and technology. The primary aim of this investment has been to speed up the operation of the Sun Gates, a pivotal structure allowing Piltover to manage its dominant trade routes. Despite these significant investments, there has been surprisingly little opposition from Piltover citizenry, as the people are often keen on innovation and optimistic about benefits it can bring. Although Piltover is one of Valoran's least militarized city-states and highly trusting of others, it does maintain a warship squadron. This fleet is tasked with protecting the Sun Gates, ensuring that the city's vital trade routes remain secure. In the arcane universe, Piltover is governed by a council of the wealthiest and most influential mercantile clans, Originally composed of seven seats, the council has seen the addition of an eighth seat, granted to House Talis, elevating Jace Talis to a position of power after his breakthroughs in Hextech technology. This decision came after a Hextech gemstone and valuable research were stolen by Zone, raising concerns that Zone could weaponize the technology against Piltover. Although adding a new seat to the council was irregular, the move was seen as necessary to secure the city's future. It is also notable that a council member can be voted out, but such a motion would require a unanimous vote. Piltover's mercantile clans from the backbone of the city's economic and political landscape. Each clan brings their unique influences, wealth and intrigue to the city's power structure. Clan Medarda, perhaps the most prestigious clan, known for its pivotal role in the construction of the Sun Gates, Clan Medarda wields enormous power. Master Jago Medarda used his family's wealth amassed from his father's piston patents to fund Hextech research. Mel Medarda, who also features prominently in the arcane storyline, represents the family's influence in politics and innovation. This clan also maintains ties with Noxus, adding a layer of complexity to its dealings. Wealthy and influential, the Kiramans are famous for their lavish lifestyle and their contributions to Hextech research. They have invested in the work of Jay Stalis, one of Piltover's brightest minds, Clan Pharos, one of Piltover's oldest clans, tracing their lineage back to the time of the Rune Wars. They amassed wealth through the harvesting of rare crystals from the Brackern of Shurima. Their production of synthetic hex crystals, although not as powerful as the originals, is easier to mass produce. However, this has had consequences, with rumors suggesting that the production of these crystals has contributed to Zone's Grey, the toxic atmosphere that chokes parts of Zone. Clan Arvino After the untimely death of Lord Arvino, leadership of the clan passed to his daughter Sophia, who became involved with Marco Volcage, a Zonite Ken Baron. Their engagement was cut short by an assassination carried out by Camille representing the dangerous and often treacherous undercurrents that run through Piltover's upper society. Clan Geopara This clan is respected for its contributions to science and innovation. Having offered patronage to a young Jay Stalis, 
nurturing his early work on Hextech, though they eventually lost Jace to Clan Ferros, they remain a respected force in the city. Known for a mysterious incident where Boswell Holloran nearly fell to his death after a gust of wind seemingly knocked him out from his balcony, this event has left a mark of the family's history. Clan Torek, another powerful clan, known for its attempts to recruit the engineer Uberti, the inventor of the self locomotor, a significant technological advancement. In addition to these mercantile clans, there are several unaffiliated individuals who wield power and influence in Biltover. Bolbok, Hoskel, Salo, and Shula are notable figures in the Arcane universe. Though their specific affiliations remain unclear, their roles hint at the complex web of power and intrigue in Piltover's political and social landscape. Each clan contributes to Piltover's identity as a city-state at the forefront of progress and invention, though with it comes rivalry, intrigue, and the ever-present risk of exploitation or disaster. These internal dynamics are crucial to the city's power structure and its continued rise as the city of progress. The wealthy clans of Piltover have long relied on seaborne trade as a cornerstone of their prosperity. Their intimate knowledge of trade routes, sea currents and the key city ports, along with influential figures that control them, remains a closely guarded secret passed down through generations to trusted heirs. For example, Jago Medarda of Clan Medarda has traveled extensively across the seas, amassing a wealth of information and experience. His personal map, amended over years of voyages, is said to hold valuable clues for those seeking fortune along the high seas. As every big and influential city, Piltover has a lot of relations with different places of the world. Piltover's trading families, including Clan Medarda, maintain strong ties with the city-state of Orma. Orma's renowned exports include rows and leathers, which are popular in Piltover. Mistress Aratme, an influential figure in Orma, maintains significant connections with Clan Medarda. The pirate haven of Biljotter plays a complex role in Piltover's economy. While the city's black market thrives on illicit hextech smuggled from Piltover, the opening of the Sun Gaze has also helped Bilgewater prosper by providing a route for pirates and rivers to target ships traveling to and from Piltover. Relations between Piltover and Demacia remain cordial, though their differences are apparent. Demacia generally welcomes Piltover scientists, but strict regulations require them to obtain clearance from Demacian officials before conducting any experiments within Demacian borders. Piltover's trade connections with Holdrum are significant, particularly in the exchange of pearls and fish sauce, both highly prized in Piltover. Clan Medarda in particular has cultivated strong ties with Lord Branin of Sea, a key figure in Holdrum. Piltover's relation with Ixtel have been far more strained. The Piltover Explorers Guild has ventured into the jungles of Ixtel in search of arcane treasures only to be met with hostility. These expeditions often end in disaster, with many explorers disappearing without a trace, due either to the dangers of the wildlife or the extremely fierce defense of their borders. However, through the actions of Kiana, Piltover has learned more about this elusive nation. The city-state of Kumangara is known for its famed Song Market District, from which songbirds are exported to Piltover. Despite this lucrative trade, Piltover's trading families find it difficult to maintain contracts in Kumangra due to the whimsical nature of its people. Clan Medarta has dealt with an individual known as Panaris to navigate these challenges. Another trading partner, Mud Town, provides Piltover with materials such as red shell bricks and near putty fruit. Clan Medarta has established ties with Sally One Eye, a prominent figure in Mud Town's trade networks. The expansionist empire of Naxos relies heavily on Piltover's port to connect its vast territories, including its holdings in northern Surima. Piltover's neutrality and strategic location made it a key player in Noxian trade. However, Piltover is not immune to Noxian intrigue. Shadow agents have infiltrated various levels of Piltover society, likely preparing for a possible future invasion. Piltover maintains a close trading re relationship with Parkleaf, particularly through Clan Medarda's dealings with foreman Pyri Yeshif. Key exports from Parkleaf include weapons, armor, and the highly sought-after honey fruit. Piltover has long exploited the natural resources of Shurima, especially Hextech crystals and ancient relics found in Shuriman tombs. The Piltover Explorers Guild frequently sends expeditions to Shurima, hiring adventurers to uncover the secrets of its ancient ruins. Piltover itself was built atop an old Shuriman outpost known as Oshra Vazon.
further highlighting the historical ties between the two regions. Piltover trade extensively with the city-state of Stonewall, importing goods such as Dunpour, milk and curds. Clan Medarda, in particular, has strong ties with councilman Ajni Nurin, a key figure in Stonewall's trade network. Piltover's relationship with Zone is one of both rivalry and deep connection. The two city-states are leaders in Hextech development and share a competitive drive to dominate the future of techmetergy. Smuggling is rampant between the two cities, with Zone thieves frequently orchestrating raids on Piltover's technology only to sell their stolen goods on the black market. Piltover's rise, both literally and figuratively, was built upon the foundations of Zone, further binding the two cities in a complicated relationship that is as much about cooperation as it is about competition. Thanks for watching Lore Lovers, I hope you enjoyed our journey through the grandeur and intrigue of Piltover. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow lore enthusiasts and make sure to subscribe to Lion Drag for more epic content. For deeper discussions and to connect with our community, join our Discord server, link in the description below. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.